the estrogenic side effects off 250 milligrams of testosterone will be the same as 350 milligrams of testosterone. 250 milligrams of testosterone will put you just over your natural range where 350 milligrams of testosterone will actually put you into, into a super physiological dose of growth and testosterone. Do you understand what I'm saying here, bro? What's up guys, Derek from ourplatesmartates.com. Today we are going to be reacting to the most pointless steroid cycle you can do by Mark Plumer. 200 to 300 milligrams of test, a waste of time in the thumbnail. Like to dislike ratio is not too favorable. Can't wait for MPMD to respond to this video. Uh, let's see, that's an old school mindset. Okay, there's a lot of comments in here that I shall probably dig into after or else we might ruin the context. So. Um, let's react to it. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna be going over the most pointless testosterone dose you could do for a cycle. I've gotten tons of controversy over this, but obviously I keep shit real with you guys. Let's roll the intro. Most pointless testosterone dose that you could ever do for a cycle is 200 milligrams to 299 milligrams of testosterone and I'm gonna give you several reasons of why. Let's break down an average TRT dose for testosterone. A average TRT dose is anywhere from 125 milligrams of testosterone all the way to, you could argue, 199 milligrams, but 199 milligrams or 200 milligrams is still gonna put you over the natural range of testosterone. Like, where are you pulling these numbers from, bro? Like, based on what? Like, if you look, everybody's blood work is variable and how many people are getting their bloods drawn during a trough relative to when they, if they otherwise were pinning daily as replicating endogenous secretion of testosterone like you normally would, getting blood drawn with an actual accurate daily administration schedule is 125 milligrams literally going to be the bottom of the barrel of testosterone reference range? No, dude. Most people who are you know, low as fuck with 125 are getting their bloods drawn multiple days after. And this is, you know, on an infrequent dosing schedule, as opposed to what would actually be therapeutic replacement if you were to replicate what you normally do, which is pulse out on a daily basis. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm not saying that's the right way to do it, the wrong way to do it, because at the end of the day, who's going to adhere to that schedule? Very few people. But at the end of the day, to say 125 to 199 is the range of therapeutic replacement is just fucking incorrect like how many people are going to be super physiological as fuck on 199 or 175 or 165 like how many people's free tea switch to daily dosing get your free and total tea drawn and see how many of you what proportion of individuals are going to be high as fuck on the reference range slash super physiological with disproportionately high freeze a decent amount of individuals so i don't know where this idea that 125 is the low end of trt maybe if you're you know drawing blood multiple days after your pin and you are assessing during a downswing yeah sure maybe you know that's a snapshot in time though it's not representative of that giant fucking spike in serum concentrations that you otherwise had after your shot so you know this is all just kind of uh numbers pulled out of his ass at the end of the day like 125 is trt for some people sure but for other individuals like i know guys who use less than that doesn't mean you need to doesn't mean you should doesn't mean that's correct maybe, maybe that's not enough for you but at the end of the day even like actually getting the compound freely circulating into your system different enzymatic activity is going to dictate different response like i said i did the video before on response to testosterone dosages and there were some individuals that hyper extreme outliers that needed like what was it like 500 milligrams of test just to reach like therapeutic um natural levels in their blood work it was like fucking insane now those were hyper extreme outliers and on the opposite side of the spectrum there were individuals who you know would be fucking five times what the average person would be on that dose of test. Everyone is going to be different, but to lump it into 125 to 199 is therapeutic. Like I would argue the vast majority of that range is borderline super physiological. Like when you actually break it down to what is your free testosterone relative to your total 
and this is on a daily bleed rather than a daily absolute and like replicating endogenous secretions like a normal person would. So yeah, maybe on the downswing, you look like a normal person, but after a fucking jab, you know, one to two times a week, however you're administering it like the normal person is, not that you should do it that way, but what a lot of people are doing it like, is that that fucking giant spike in serum concentrations, is that representative of natural production whatsoever? Not at all, of course not. Sake of argument, let's say it's 125 to 170 milligrams. So yes, you gym bro that's TRTing at 250 milligrams of testosterone, you're fucking ridiculous, you're losing your fucking mind and you're absolutely fucking all your results up, I promise you. Okay, so keep in mind, average human produces three to 10 milligrams of free form testosterone on a daily basis naturally. That's three to 10 milligrams pulsed out of your goddamn balls. Now, to say that, you know, 250 is, you know, he's basically saying is a cycle essentially, and anything less than, you know, 125 is, you know, sub therapeutic, like, again, it's all individually dependent. Like, again, that study, how many individuals are going to need potentially potentially need 250 to actually get, you know, adequate serum concentrations. Not very many, fucking very few, but there are some. It doesn't mean you're, you know, screwing up. Like he says, like you fucked up if you're using that much. Maybe you're not, maybe you actually need that much. You know, it's going to vary individual to individual, but in general, again, like these arbitrary numbers is pulling out of his ass. Like this is why you should be going a lot off of symptom relief too. It's not just about arbitrary numbers on a piece of paper. If you have poor enzymatic efficiency in certain aspects, like, just because you pinned a certain milligram amount, it doesn't mean you should yield this effect because everyone else gets this effect in this general range. And you can kind of see where this is going. I'm trying to just like, this is a bit more semantics in terms of what is actual TRT? Like what's the dosage range that actually equates to normal production? It's like, you know, like 125 for a lot of people is like, you know, pretty solid. It's going to like put your free at the high end of normal a lot of times. Not for everyone. That's, you know, for me, that's what it does. But again, does that any of that even matter when there are individuals who may need upwards of 175, 200, whatever for therapeutic replacement and symptom relief? Like this is pretty much just breaking down the arbitrary semantics of this conversation to begin with. So then we can actually dissect the real context of this video, which is the dosage used for a blast and if it's pointless or not. But let's go on to the other side of things. A blast, a blast should be anywhere from 350 milligrams of testosterone all the way to 500 milligrams. Now, 500 milligrams is going to be if you are competing in bodybuilding. I think 500 milligrams is the end all be all for testosterone. You don't really need to go higher. You don't really need to go lower. So if you aren't competing, then 500 is too much and it's far too extreme for anyone to get results. Like what if you're an individual who does not respond to 300? Maybe you need more. Maybe you're a poor um, enzymatic efficiency and actually getting this fucking testosterone into your system. Like there's a lot of situations, again, where it's, you know, the numbers at the end of the day are a guideline and are generally applicable, but this is not a widespread like blanket statement you can apply to everyone. And when you get into the range of 350 to 500 being like the adequate, like the proper blast amount. Why not fucking 600, bro? Why not? Please explain. 500 is going to be your best ratio for growth as well as minimal side effects and getting the most out of every single cycle. Now, okay, so he said this is the dose that's the best for the minimal side effects for the maximum results and blah, blah, blah. Why? Based on what, bro? Like, where are you pulling this number from? Why 500? Like, why is it the traditional take your 500 megs of test and shut the fuck up? Like, is this like literally the physical reincarnation of the fucking 2010 forums? Like in a video, I like, I'm baffled at this shit, dude. Like why, if we're going to go by even something credible whatsoever, let's look at graded dose response studies. We have the only very reputable, really dose response study we can evaluate here. And we find using upwards of 600 milligrams of testosterone for 20 weeks straight is well tolerated. So by that fucking logic, why would we not just use 600? Why is it 500, bro? Why is it, why would we use 350 to 500 when we could be using 600? Like, does it make any logical sense when the fucking ROI is so much higher? Like when you actually break down, look at these differences in fucking size gains and strength gains, bro. Like we have fat-free mass at baseline and we have 25 milligram group, 50 milligram, 125, 300, and 600. Like these are pretty substantial differences from week zero to week 16. We can see pretty blatantly, and when you look at body composition analysis, 
from baseline to week 20 and the change in baseline, the 600 milligram group definitely seems to outperform the 300 and the 125 and the 50 and the 25, as you can see here, fat-free mass in kilograms by DEXA scan. 8.9 kilograms in the 600 group versus 5.5 and 300. So like clearly 600, you know, even though it's not linearly progressing where there is, you know, some level of diminishing returns apparent, 600 is definitely blatantly better than 300, obviously in the ROI. And it seems like when you break this down, all the patients were, uh, you know, very well tolerating the medication. You know, there was no real significant aberrations in anything. There was no crazy fucking outlier situations with fucking heart attacks or anything. And this is a 20 week cycle, bro. Like this is pretty long. So by that logic, like why, why are we doing 500? Like, why don't we just jump up to 600? What's the fucking, why cut it there? You know, this seems like the dose that is actually like supported by the literature to be like, side effect free and the maximum ROI. So if we have literature supporting that you're gonna be safe doing 600 for 20 weeks, why the fuck would we do 350? Why would we do 500 if we're a bodybuilder? Like why are we not getting, we're shutting down our natural testosterone level. So why would we not make the most of that time where we're shutting down our ball sack, bro? Does it make any fucking sense? Please elaborate. Now, obviously, when you add in different compounds, that kind of changes, but we are talking for a general rule of thumb. But let's get into you, bro. Let's get into your first steroid cycle, or your second, or your third, or your first testosterone cycle. Why am I telling you that doing 200 to 300 milligrams is 100% pointless? Why? Let's use the example of doing a blast at 250 milligrams of testosterone or 350 milligrams of testosterone. Now, 250 milligrams will completely shut down your testosterone. 350 will also completely shut down your testosterone. 600 milligrams will also fully shut down your testosterone. The estrogenic side effects off 250 milligrams of testosterone will be the same as 350 milligrams of testosterone. How the fuck? You're saying that the literal thing that determines how much estrogen is aromatized in your body, the testosterone that hits aromatase, that literally converts into estrogen, the exact same amount of estrogenic output is actually resulted from a 250 input and a 350 input. Like, is there even a fucking rebuttal to this statement? 250 milligrams of testosterone will put you just over your natural range. Where so fucking off on this, bro. 250 will put you just over your natural range. Let's look at body composition analysis for 25, 50, 125, 300, and 600. Like, what do we see when these individuals are shut down and they're, you know, of course, you know, every dose, you know, you're shut down regardless if you're on the fucking 300, the 600, whatever. These individuals were actually using a GNRH agonist and they are, you know, blatantly shut down regardless if they're on 25, 50, 125, 300, whatever it is. When you look at the dosages here, you see that 25, 50, and 125. Like, what is the big disparity here? Well, fat-free mass in the 25 and the 50 groups relative to fat mass it's not too favorable. These individuals are basically below natural production essentially and are netting out losses. These individuals are not gaining shit as you would expect from, you know, high functioning males who then castrate themselves essentially. And, then, and I'm not saying you're gonna castrate yourself on fucking 25. This study is based using a concurrent GNRH agonist to assess actually what these dosages can actually yield in a muscle growth and strength context. Now 125, what do we see? We see a 3.4 kilogram change in fat-free mass increase from baseline on 125. What do we see in fat mass? Do we see the equivalent giant spike in fat like you do with these 25 and 50 milligram doses that are sub-therapeutic? No, actually you see no fucking change whatsoever in fat mass on the 125 group because at the end of the day, this is essentially pushing you into a little bit super physiological, you know? As low as that sounds, the fucking stable blood serum concentrations, no dipping, no anything, based on a diurnal rhythm, poor sleep, whatever it is, micronutrient deficiencies, whatever it is, you're stably maintaining these perfect fucking levels the entire time. I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect for everyone, I'm just saying in general 125 is going to put a lot of individuals on the high end of the reference range for free T, and it's keeping a bleed of it. You're maintaining that regardless if you have a shitty sleep, a shitty diet, or whatever. 
these individuals, you're getting a minor PED advantage. Now, is this you know enough to justify shutting yourself down necessarily? Probably not, which I would totally agree with. But the fact that you're saying that 250 is what is needed to just edge out natural production is fucking ludicrous, dude. 300, barely above 250 because you know the estrogenic output's exactly the same. 5.2 kilogram fat-free mass gain with a 0.5 kilogram loss in fat at the same time. Now, obviously, these uh, you know the fat mass by underwater weighting versus DEXA scan, DEXA scan. You can use whichever one you want. At the end of the day, we see consistent either increases in fat-free mass or consistent decreases in fat mass based upon what is actually subtherapeutic and what is actually putting you into you know high normal versus what's super physiological and you know i would definitely argue the 300 and the 600 are super physiological 125 is you know you know like high functioning male essentially for the majority of individuals when you look at the serum total and free testosterone levels let's take a look here we have lh fsh shbg igf1 with the total t and the free t on castrated individuals on gnrh agonists on the 25 milligram group by week 16 they've dropped to 253 nanograms per deciliter the 50 milligram group 306 nanograms per deciliter 125 570 nanograms per deciliter with a free t of 52 picograms per milliliter like does this seem sub therapeutic to you now when you're looking at these values here and comparing it to reference ranges you have to keep in mind too these were taken these blood draws were taken one week after last injection so this is after a giant like this is a fucking suboptimal administration practice, obviously, which is the result of, again, why this 125 is at 570, why this 125 is at 52. These individuals are going to have dipping levels by the time they're getting their blood drawn, but they would be much higher otherwise. But again, this is representative of actual therapeutic replacement. Even a week after a shot, we have the 125 group at baseline going from 553 nanograms per deciliter to 570 a week after their injection. We have the 125 group going from 49 free to 52 a week after their injection, not, you know, directly after when everything is spiking into the fucking stratosphere. We have the 300 group going from 71 baseline to 138 a week after. We have the 600 group going from 64 to 275 a week after. So again, what is the actual representation of therapeutic replacement of all of these different dosages? The only one you could fucking argue is the 125 group. Now again, like he's talking about 250 being like right above, you know, therapeutic replacement. Definitely not the case, bro. Like we're seeing blatant performance enhancing properties of 125 a week to a point that is, you can't even fucking argue about it. So I don't, I'm not saying that that's what you should be using for your cycle either. I'm just trying to dissect and kind of parse out exactly what he's saying and try and just exemplify how nonsensical of an argument it really is. Am I trying to say you should use 200? No, I've never been the fucking guy to say you should use 200 either. I believe even my oldest article I was talking about, like I very rarely put out like literal dosages out in there. And one article that I specifically mentioned, I mentioned my first cycle, if I could go back in time and do it again, I would have started at 300 a week. That's what I said. And as far as his breakdown of, you know, 500 being, you know, the thing that the 250 and the 350, I mean, the exact same estrogenic output, like I, I can't imagine he even believes that. Like, I don't know, is he just fucking rambling because he is, you know, has high energy and is fucking going off in the video and didn't want to cut it out? Like, I don't know, but there's no fucking sane person who would say that if they know anything about these drugs. So for me, what do I think makes the most sense? I made a comment on another post that was kind of touching on this subject and it was brought up about the low dosage thing again, you know, all this kind of shit. And this is the comment I made. So someone mentioned that me and like Steve and I don't I don't know who else, you know, advise like 250 as a blanket statement or something. So I said, if you think I advise 250 as a blanket statement, you haven't read my testosterone dosage article or listened to my videos closely enough, speculating that your response to 500 will be good plus side effect free based on a graded dose response study is not the best approach in my opinion, when you could easily approach it from a far more reasonable lower entry point and titrate accordingly based on individual response and the lowest effective dose for the context specific goal. So again, do you need to use fucking 350 or 500? Maybe you can realize, you know, the goals that you have with less. And if that is the case, should you just use more for the sake of it being your shutdown, you need to use more, or does it make sense to use what you can get away with and perhaps do the sensical approach, which is titrate up accordingly based on your needs. Like for James English, the guy was on like 180 milligrams of, te of gear, not even tests. He was on like fucking, what was it? 70 tests or, and 100 trend or 80 tests and 100 trend. I forget what it was exactly, but is, that's like a, an outlier scenario. How many guys are going to get away with that necessarily and you know realize their bodybuilding goals? 
probably fucking none, you know? And even for him, like he's not happy with where he's at. He's gonna be trying to push the envelope and end up on a classic physique pro stage. And yeah, he's gonna need more than fucking 180 milligrams to do that. No one's ever questioned otherwise. It's just, there is a individual response to things. And you also have to factor in your side effect propensity as well. If you are prone to certain shit, you can't push the envelope above a certain threshold. And maybe you're delegated to a certain dose of whatever, fill in the blank compound. Just because 500 is the dose that some people can tolerate without an AI and it's been deemed the forum appropriate dose for whatever reason over the years, doesn't mean it's the fucking best thing for you. Like how many guys are going to respond the best to 500 tests, no AI, no titration, no nothing, Less guys that are gonna respond well to 300 and titrate it up accordingly based on your goals and perhaps adding in adjunct anabolics on top based on your individual dose response and your own individual needs based on your athletic endeavors, based on your muscle building goals, based on your estrogen, ica burden, your hair loss propensity, your whatever the fuck. There's a million different reasons. So I also never said the entry point needs to be 250 either. And yes, many guys may need to stack before even getting to 500. Not everyone handles E2 DHT as favorably as another. E2 being estradiol, DHT, you guys know what that is. So the 500T entry is too aggressive in my opinion when titration could easily avoid finding out you'd have been better off with insert compound based on sport slash goal specific context and individual response to titration and a lower than 500T base. Perhaps you wanna avoid using an AI. Maybe you end up realizing, oh, maybe it's smarter to be using 300 tests plus you know a bit of primo maybe you end up at 500 tests and you can tolerate it just fine but you otherwise didn't need to induce fucking gynecomastia and or high blood pressure and or fucking hair loss and or fill in the blank before you fucking realize that you know like there are individual responses to these drugs and starting at 500 like you have you have time, bro. You don't need to be on 500 right away. You can fucking take your time and titrate your way up there. No one's saying you don't need 500 to fucking step on a bodybuilding stage. You could easily end up needing that for your goals. But a lot of individuals, most gym rats, most fucking people in actual sports don't need 500 fucking tests. So it does not make sense for every single individual. The thing I found baffling too, is this guy posted a story today Best steroid for a first timer, testosterone, 310 to 500 milligrams weekly. He's like so dead set against like going under, hitting that 300 or less mark that it needs to be 310 milligrams for it to be bit, uh, you know classified as a best steroid cycle. And this is like such a general range. Like what's the difference, bro? There's no difference between 250 and 350 of estrogenic output, right? So why not just do 450? There's probably no difference between 350 and 450 for estrogen, right? Like there's no, there's no actual like, response at the aromatase enzyme to more testosterone, right? Like that's not how estrogen's created or anything. It must be the exact same outcome. And then that's only 50 milligrams less than 500. So we might as well just do 500, right? But 500 is only a hundred less than the actual dose used for fucking almost half a year on healthy young men with no fucking adverse outcomes. So why would we not do 600 to get the maximum amount of fucking gains for our exposure while our ball sack is shut down? Why the fuck would we not do that, bro? Why are we doing 500 when we could be doing 600? Please explain to me. 350 milligrams of testosterone will actually put you into, into a super physiological dose of growth and testosterone. Do you understand what I'm saying here, bro? Is why would you risk shutting your testosterone down to get a hair over your natural limit. You've sat at home, you've been laying in bed, you've decided you want to take steroids. Why are you going to take steroids, risk the side effects to get a tiny little bit more than you would naturally? If you're going to take steroids, make it worth it. And I'm not saying that 350 milligrams is gonna blow you up like fucking Big Rami. At least it's gonna put you into the range of testosterone where you are going to optimize your insulin sensitivity. You're going to optimize your protein synthesis. You're gonna optimize your recovery, your strength, your growth. You are not gonna get that type of growth by just having a hair over your natural testosterone limit. But let's throw all that aside because what the fuck, that makes complete sense, right? I know it does. The PCT between 250 milligrams of testosterone and 350 milligrams of testosterone are the exact same, bro. You're still going to take HCG. You're still going to take Novodex. There's going to be no difference. And I guarantee you, your hormones are going to come back just as fast from 250 to 350. What about 450? What about 500? 
fuck it, let's just do 600. Like, why would we not? You know, it's well tolerated for 20 weeks. Why the fuck wouldn't we? I don't know. Like, where, why not? So there is no reason that you should do anything between 200 and 300 milligrams of testosterone because not only are you just wasting your time, but again, you are putting your body under the stress of anabolic steroids for minimal fucking gains. You gym bros that are TRTing at 250 and then blasting at 500, you just don't have a big enough ratio to give yourself that type of growth. You're just what? Just exhausting your body 24/7. So he's saying, okay, he's saying you're using too much for your TRT, basically, is what I gather. And you're never gonna grow to your full potential. If you're blasting at 500 and you're TRTing at 145 or 150, when you have that fluctuation of going from 150 to 500, bro, you're gonna explode. But when you do that fluctuation from 250 to 500, you're gonna get a little bit better. You what the f Does that make any fucking sense? You guys see those guys that are always running steroids in the gym and no matter what they do, they look the same every single year. You've seen them for the last seven years and you're like, bro, this guy has not got any bigger or any leaner for the last seven fucking years. It's because they're TRTing at 250, blasting at 500 and never getting any fucking better. What if they went down to 150 and then blasted 500? That would be the game changer. So no matter if you're TRTing or it's your first cycle, there is no reason to be running 200 to 300 milligrams of testosterone and those are the facts. But the biggest thing that I'm trying to do is just educate the younger group here that it is not worth it to do a steroid cycle between 200 and 300 milligrams. There will not be a point, there has not been a point, and there will never be a point to have this type of cycle in your regime ever. Okay, so let's go into the comment section and see what the general feedback is. Can't wait for MPMD to respond to this video. You can run it longer, less size, probably won't need an AI, and have room to up the dose when needed. Exactly, you're off on this one. Let's see, maybe I'm extremely fortunate, but when I run 700, I still don't need an AI. Maybe I'm a genetic outlier when it comes to response, but I've always had an AI on hand if needed, but never needed it. Agreed, MPMD, Russo, and Ian Vier all say the opposite. Um, Cause they know what the data says. These other guys are going solely by how they feel. That's not the way to dose a drug into your body. There's effective dose ranges. And at a certain point you're wasting the drug and harming your health beyond those ranges. Um, I go by what my blood work tells me. I watch all those guys and you are correct, but 700 test is definitely much more effective than 500 and I experience very minimal side effects. Again, individual response. I ran 750 once and hated it. Now stick to 250 and if I'm feeling really adventurous, I'll run 500 with a bit of DECA. You think you're a genius when you get information out of dummy YouTubers who are saying that you don't need much when in actual reality, they don't need much, but majority don't have the genetics like them and don't respond to all the steroids. I'm pretty sure anyone in the comment section who's gonna run 200 to 300 tests a week won't see shit in terms of gains. I've never ran a cycle over 300 tests and have progressed plenty. Granted, I didn't start until I was 30 and pretty much peaked at being an idiot. I'm also not trying to step on stage or compete in powerlifting competition. I just enjoy the feeling of having a stable test level and care about my longevity, which is why I'm not blasting any more than 300. I did 270 per week for my first cycle for 16 weeks. I gained almost 20 pounds and got great results. Also, my test was over 2,000 nanograms per deciliter. Go figure. This was a great beginner dose for me to really feel and understand the compound, also to manage the side effects. Anything below 250 is a complete waste in my opinion. This is only my personal experience. Yeah, I would definitely be on board with what he just said. That's a old school mindset. Bro, you gotta do at least 500 tests to get those gains. Nah, bro, I really like you and your channel, but you're off on this one. More isn't always better, less equals less side effects. You're gonna run it longer, et cetera, et cetera. Me watching this video felt like I went back to the forum years of 2008. Fucking exactly. Someone's been watching too much MPMD because more plates isn't just bro science. True shit, he's off on this for real. 100% um, agree, I wish I never listened to these idiots on the forums, 500 milligrams is standard, blah, blah. That's like 10 pl plus times the testosterone produced naturally. He didn't say 500 was necessary for gains. He is saying that 500 is the best for most people amount in order to achieve the best gains with the least side effects. 500 is not a ton of tests. And while you certainly could lower, use a lower dose and as Derek would say, titrate up to 500, I wouldn't recommend staying at something like 200 to 300 indefinitely if you want even better gains. Eventually 500 will offer more gains. P.S. I've noticed 
through extensive and long-term blood work and minor gyno side effects as soon as I go past 500 and start having issues. Additionally, I use a lot of trend and may soon experiment with 400 tests because perhaps I won't lose anything given how much trend I use. Who knows, it's an experiment. Yeah, so obviously you can twist the things people are saying in any of these situations. But no one's fucking saying use 200 for fucking ever and get the gains you want out of it. If you have goals that exceed the fucking ability of the compound to yield those results for you, this is going to be based on your sport, your fucking goals, so many th different things. Some people literally use gear for the hematology benefits. Some people use GH for injury prevention, not for, you know, satellite cell proliferation. Some people use shit for different purposes. And it does not mean that this dose yields a certain thing that you need to get out of it that justifies you need to be on 500 or you need to be on like by that logic, let's go all use fucking 600 because that's what the fucking graded dose response study used that was well tolerated for goddamn 20 weeks. Like that's what I would say as a rebuttal every time I hear this 500 is the fucking dose that needs to be used. It's just mind boggling how people don't understand <laughs> individual dose response and actual sport specific applications. Everyone needs different shit and not everyone needs a base of 500 tests to realize their basic physiologic requirements of estrogen and concurrent anabolic activity can be achieved from other adjunct agents that were more progressive and refined than testosterone if needed based on estrogenic side effects, DHT side effects, whatever the fuck. It's all individual at the end of the day and all these blanket statements like Plummer is throwing out in his video get everything all fucked up. Uh, I'm pretty sure the most pointless testosterone dose would be something like 15 milligrams a week. Yeah, okay, well yes, you're right. <laughs> Um, the average man produces around 49 milligrams per week, which would result in 500 to 600 nanogram per deciliter blood levels. 200 milligrams would be close to four times your average natural testosterone levels, which is plenty significant. Now, yes, if you're upper reference range, it'll be less significant, but still significant. Um, like I think a lot of people would be surprised if they're checking their free T after a stable administration schedule on testosterone and anthate. Like it doesn't take a lot to get your free T up to the high end of normal. Now, again, this is different for every individual based on SHBG and whatnot, but in general, you know, like 250 being a hair over natural, like that's definitely not the case. But again, does that mean that you should only be using fucking 250? No, like titrate up accordingly based on your needs, but keep it fucking reasonable and use the minimum effective dose. That is the whole fucking point. And how do you determine your minimum effective dose if you're jumping head first into 500 and potentially fucking yourself up unnecessarily or maybe not fucking yourself up because we all know 600 is well tolerated. So we could all just do 600 anyways, you know, bro. But you can at least establish what is a amount that is effective is actually making use of it. You're titrating up and you find your minimum effective dose before just jumping in haphazardly to half a gram. You know, like why not? Like 300, we can see pretty fucking substantial outcomes in testosterone dose response studies. And the fucking room for advancements is always there if you can tolerate it well rather than being like, oh, 500 off the bat. I need an AI. I need to fucking do this. So anyways, this comment section is pretty much as you would expect, you know, people saying he's uh, wrong. Um, this is, you know, the, you know, the bro method from forums and shit from years ago, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if he's just doing this to get a fucking reaction video out of me, but obviously it worked. So here we are dismantling Mark Plumer. So I hope I don't see more videos from Mark about this kind of shit. But uh, everyone has their opinion. And if you think 500 is the only way to go, like that's your own individual opinion. All I would throw back at that point is at that point, why are we not doing 600? Please dissect this study and explain to me why we're not doing 600 if that is the logic. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. My suggestion, use the minimum effective amount of whatever the fuck you're using. Effective, yielding your goals. Why the fuck do you need more than what achieves your goals? You know? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplace28s.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplace28s. Facebook, Snapchat, not pitch you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with. In the video description below, my TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch, recommended lab tests and diagnostics through my clinic to assess your health. Um, we get high quality oversight from doctors who actually understand testosterone dose relationships and testosterone aromatizing into estrogen and basic shit and interpreting biomarkers and what is subtherapeutic and what is actually achieving symptom relief and basing it off that and not just arbitrary milligram numbers. Yeah. So if you want high quality doctor oversight, which is highly recommended if you're going to be exploring exogenous androgens 
It is absolutely critical that you get somebody who understands this shit thoroughly. So our team has the most insightful experience on this, in my opinion, and you can expect the highest quality care. And what sets this apart too, is that I do not actually give a fuck if you end up on test. We don't actually make our money off of the medication markups, like most clinics that just want to feed you as many prescriptions as possible. We make our money on the consultations and medical oversight. And that's what I pride myself in is the high quality doctors and uh, medical oversight that you will receive from our clinic rather than, you know, being a cookie cutter fucking testosterone mill. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.